Cool. Great. Um, so I'm just I'm a uh, rising senior here at Stanford. Um, and for the past 10 weeks, I was working on uh, four different projects here uh, at Testa. Um, and so I want to talk first about the first two projects that I was working on. Um, so the first one is uh, was called deportation trains, and we were looking at um, specifically deportation trains in the United States, um, looking at the time period of the early 1900s. Um, and specifically, we were interested in seeing how, uh, or seeing tracing the the, the path that um, migrants took when they were in the country, um, and following them as they were like arrested and like detained and deported, and following the trains, the paths that they took. Um, and the trains around the country and sort of seeing like what it was like to be um, a deportee like during that time and what it was like to be in those deportation trains and spend time at like each stop waiting for more people to be loaded on the trains and then like ultimately left off, uh, left, yeah, dropped off at a stop uh, to be deported. Uh, and so that's what that's actually the, the first thing I wanted to show you guys, which was uh, a Tableau document. Um, what I which was pretty much working on for the summer um, was taking the Excel sheet with all of the information that um, was sort of taken from deportation records from the government. Um, and so in these deportation files, there was a ton of uh, demographic information. There was information on um, you know, how long people were living in the US, like where they were living, what they were doing, all sorts of things. Um, and uh, yeah, so all of that was on the Excel sheet and really it was up to me to, to migrate that and sort of <clears throat> put it in a form that the, the software that we were using would be able to really read that and uh, turn that into sort of a prototype so that we could really see and visualize uh, all of that. And so that's what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, well. Uh, cool. Uh, so the second project that I worked on was uh, about San Antonio, Texas, and we were um, looking at the. Before I move on, I want to try to show it to you guys on here at least because it's a fun little visualization. Uh, and you can, never mind, you guys aren't going to be able to see it. Uh, anyway, so uh, the expansion of San Antonio. So this one was about the Fredericksburg Road in San Antonio, and we were looking at. Um, Sort of tracing the expansion, the the urban and suburban expansion of San Antonio, Texas, uh, one of the largest and fastest growing uh, cities in the country. Um, and so my role for this one was a little bit different in that I wasn't so much going through and like building a prototype, and I don't have uh, necessarily as much to show. Though I do have some pictures. Um, so this is sort of the visualization stuff that we were doing, that we have been that uh, yeah we've been doing in the project. Previously, but my role wasn't so much directly applied to this. It was really going through uh, some of the local files we have here at Stanford and going through like, the um, special collections available um, through the libraries and really uh, compiling those so that they would be available to the researchers who actually aren't um, local and are living in San Antonio. Um, and so, uh, even though like a lot of cool visualization stuff was going on, that wasn't really what my uh, role was in the project, uh, at least for this one. <laughs> Uh, so the third project that I worked on, worked on now, moving to the second half of the summer, um, was uh, about Mexican migration, and this one was a bit different as well. Uh, the project was sort of organized around a uh, book that uh, the researcher is uh, writing, and so really my job was to go through and uh, make sort of edits and changes, and, and go through with uh, other resources such as interviews that uh, the researcher has conducted. Um, and pull things from those interviews uh, and pull uh, things that would be relevant um, to put in the uh, book and sort of go through editing uh, and things like that. Um, and so I don't have as much to show you guys for that one either. Uh, but the last project, which was probably my favorite, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be favorite, but it was probably my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so this one was really cool because uh, actually for a lot of the same reasons I feel like the first one was really interesting to me. Um, 
it was there. It was a similar situation in which there was uh, already like an Excel spreadsheet and like a ton of data that um, wasn't really like me collecting uh, data so much as, as the as the first uh, actually the second project. Um, but in this one, uh, since the data was already there, it was really just getting to put it or getting to manipulate it and putting it into the software that I wanted to show you guys. Um, and I got to make some really cool uh, data visualizations. Um, in which oh, I didn't. So the project was about uh, the flow of capital um, in 19th century Europe, specifically the second, like the first half of the second half of the 19th century. Um, and so we were looking at how um, stocks and bonds were being sold in and out of Europe, specifically looking at like, um, or not specifically looking at, but we had data uh, specifically from one bank. Um, and we were looking at the transactions that were coming in and out of that bank and the nationalities of those clients and like the gender of those clients and uh, how much the, the transaction was worth and things like that. So we had all sorts of variables uh, that we were playing with. And really, um, I got uh, something that I really enjoyed about this project is I got a lot of freedom to uh, take all of these different variables in the data and play with them in the software uh, and make really cool visualizations. And not all of them uh, really turned out to be super meaningful visualizations, uh, but it was really cool to develop the things that I did develop. And uh, so this is an example of um, one of the patterns that we saw in the data. We noticed that in the earlier uh, part of the year, um, which is represented by the things on the left of the red line, so you can see kind of the color coding on the side, um, it corresponds, the colors correspond to uh, seasons. And so the blue is like winter, so it starts at January, February, March, and then April, May, June, uh, et cetera. Uh, and so the trend that we noticed was that there was a significant portion that was happening, you know, of the, at least the purchases in January and specifically the first half of the year um, in both the early uh, time periods of 1855 to 1870 and 1871 to 1896. And so this is just part of like, uh, some, I guess to give you guys examples of some of the things that I was making. And then, so here's another one that's kind of similar, but this one's looking at interest rates. Um, and their relation to the season. So kind of seeing what month, the, um, <clears throat> sorry, what, per, what interest, what percentage each interest rate was of each month. Uh, so like there were lots of interest rates that were uh, given out that month. Uh, and so, yeah. Uh, and the last thing that I want to show you guys was a few maps that I also made, moving maps with that same data that are MP4s. Uh, and I could, those are easier to like visualize on here. So um, I could definitely show those to you. So here's the first one. Uh, and so what you'll see is kind of the movement of the capital and the, like the flow of the trends. So what we did was break it up by countries. Okay. Okay. Oh, cool. Um, great. So, all right, cool. Let's see. It. Okay, cool. So this is, uh, all right. Well, that's nice. Cool. So this is the visualization that I wanted to show you guys on Tableau, which was, which corresponds to the first project, the deportation train. Um, and sort of to show you guys like what the data was looking like before, or the, this is the before. And so we had like, you know, hundreds of thousands of lines of uh, records from uh, the immigration files from the government. Um, and so it was my job really to convert that into something that the software could read uh, because it wasn't really in the proper format, I guess. Uh, and ultimately I was able to make a little prototype where you can see uh, the colors of the symbols represent uh, sort of the status of the person, whether they're being you know, born in that country or like just moving around in that country or um, they're already arrested or, deport, or a deportee on the trains. And those don't come until a little bit later. They're starting to pop up uh, now. But starting now, you'll start to see like really the shape, the outline of the trains as people move across. 
and then are deported. Um, and so, yeah, this was one of the cool visualizations that I made. And uh, the other map that I made that was similar to this is, is very similar. <laughs> Um, uh, so they're, they're like really similar, but the idea is that um, you can see the trends for different countries uh, are sort of are slightly different or in different places. Um, anyway, yeah, that's uh, my project. You said uh, just very quickly. You said one of um, that the visualizations you came up with from the last project weren't uh, didn't turn out to be significant. What do you mean by that? Right. right. Okay. So like when we were I, I don't know. when I have the the software the Tableau software open, like we can see all of the different variables that are in the Excel sheet. Um, and so just because like all of the different variables are there doesn't mean that they're all going to be like related to each other. So if I'm looking at like the relationship between like say I'm mapping like uh, the relationship between gender and like status or gender and like, I don't know, something else. Like maybe some of the trends that we were mapping or some of the things that we were putting into a visualization form didn't really mean much in the context of like the data that, that we were using. Mm -hmm. um, and so like it was really a lot of, it wasn't so much like a ton of this like trial and error kind of thing, but um, there were like some visualizations that I was playing around with that I was like, you know, once I once I like was satisfied with what it looked like, I was like, this is visually nice, but like it doesn't really mean anything. Uh, it's not really a trend in any way, um, and we can't really. I mean, you could use it, but like it wouldn't really like like the story it would tell would be like there is no trend here. Mm -hmm. um, but was it the visualization that told you that? Uh, the act of creating it that told you. That? I think so. Yeah, uh, it was a lot of like interpreting the data, uh, and yeah. 